Right, we've got a little jobbing job to do today. Perfect little job because outside the sun is shining and I want to get done early today and have a little bit of a break this afternoon. So today's little job is swapping out this customer's kitchen tap because they're just not happy with it. And they want to go for, again, another black one, but one of these ones with the flexi top. You know, you could just pull it down and clean all around the sink and that. So we've got that to swap out in there. But they've also said to me, when you come to do the job, could you tidy up the mess of pipe work that is underneath the sink? So I just opened the doors and yeah, they weren't kidding. This pipe here is obviously the cold, goes out to feed the outside tap. Cold here, hot there, but yeah, it's just, uh, it's just sort of thrown in. And you can see whoever's done it in the first place has, oh well, it looks like they didn't want to go to the van and get the proper drill into the wall clips. They just thought they'd nail it back with some nail on clips. So. We'll get some proper, we'll get some proper clips on there, but what I am going to do is fit two full bore butterfly isolation valves, low level, we'll cut them in and then we can work from there, re that, make it look a little bit tidier and then get the tap in. So that's about it on this job, nice and simple, but we've got the kit out, we've got the Neural Tapex kit to get up and to the back of this sort of half Balfast sink because we know that's going to be a bit of a pain. Water turns off under there, I've already done it. Water's off to the tap. So first things first, let's get them two little isolation valves cut into that pipe work. Right, so what we've done, we've marked on the bottom hot and cold. Now I've just pulled the cold away from the wall We'll take the clips off it and we'll just cut the pipe and pop on our hot and cold valves. So we'll get the cutters on, get this plastic speed fit or John Guess or whatever it is cut out of the way. The water's gone a little bit there, but don't matter. We can just mop that up. It's not a problem. Make sure you get the inserts in, push it right in. I mean, these inserts are just to keep the outside of the pipe sort of solid when you put the compression fitting on so we get our nut on get our olive on and we'll get a little bit of paste around the top now interestingly enough some people have said to me the paste that i'm using in this video or because i used it in a previous video is no longer ras approved or something so i am going to go off and see if i can find out a little bit more about that because it's quite interesting to be honest how pastes can go out of date or approval if you like so we get the first full ball butterfly valve on there and then we'll do the same with the hot as well. So there we go. We've got the two hot and cold valves on there. So now I can get the water back on and we can work from there. I'm just going to take all this pipe work out now. I'll probably, well, to be fair, I don't really need to move any of that out of the way. So I'll leave that because our feeds are going to come across there. So let's get this pipe work out of the way and get the tap out. So what I'll do, I'll just take it off wherever I can from the tap here we go and the same same with that one and then we can just whip it off the outside tap feed just up there so I'm going to re-pipe that anyway. There we go. Cleared out. Let's get some clips up there and then we can work back. Oh no, first of all, let's get the tap out and the new one in. So we've got the old faithful, the Neurad Tapix kit out. Always comes out of the van when I'm, whenever I'm doing a tap swap. Now, I did see, I don't know if I've mentioned it yet, I did see at Installer Show, but they are bringing out the longer sockets to go on to tap. Sometimes when the bar in the back of one of the outside taps is really long, loads of people have commented about this on videos, when the bar is really long, you can't get that socket over the top of the bar. This one's all right, but sometimes if the bars are long, they need a longer socket. Now, people have gone out and bought longer sockets, but Nurad have addressed this and they are bringing out a new extended socket range. So I, I, I did a little bit of a video at Installer Show, I'll bang it in. I did a little bit of a video at Installer Show, a 60 second sort of 
overview of it. So I'll put that in now and you can take a look. Just quickly dropped over to the NERAD tool stand because I got tipped off about the product that is just here. But as you'll always know, the NERAD Tapix kit is a, a, an amazing bit of kit. If you've got one, you'll know how good they are. If you haven't got one, get one. They are a little bit pricey, but once you use them, you know full well they are the, the go-to thing that comes out of the van whenever you've got to do a, a tap change. But the issue that everyone has always had is the length of them. Some tap nuts and whatnot, and you've got to get off the bottom. They have the threaded bar that's too long for that. NERAD have finally come up with the extended ones. They are perfect. 16 mil, all the way down, even the smaller ones, and also 70 mil for your um, tap cartridges. So yeah, NERAD's finally bought out what everyone's wanted. So there you go, that's it. It's coming out soon. I think they said August, so keep an eye out for it if you're in the market for one of them. But for now, we've got to get up the back there, I don't know if you can see it, right up there. So we use the extended arm on this near our Tapex kit. Let me just pop the camera there. You should be able to see it go straight up. Now I always just try and pop it up. There we go, prime example. This is one that that will not reach. So let me just see if we can get it off with this little pair of adjustables. I don't know if I can get my arm up that far, but to be honest, it's going to be tight. I might do. This is why them Tapex kits are a lot easier. Right, let me struggle and get this out. There we go, that's it. Ow, it's a bit of a struggle without that kit, but we've got it out. So, let's take this one out and get this new one set into position, and then we can look at getting it connected underneath the sink. So this is the tap that the customer supplied. Nice long tails on it, but it has got, pop that there, it has got this set up on it. So let's pop the two tails through that. And then what you've got to do, is screw the bottom of that into the bottom of the tap like that. And then, Shroud's already built onto the bottom there, so underneath you've got obviously your washer, your plate, and then your retaining clip. Let's pop this one in. I like the fact it's got long hoses, it just gives us a little bit more room to play. There we go, perfect. Let's go underneath and get it connected in. You've seen me in some strange positions in the last few weeks in videos, but I just thought I'd show you how this tap connects underneath. Let me spin the camera around and put it up. As you can see, that brass nut is on underneath. That brass nut is now on the thread, but you've got a screw there and there's a screw, if you can see it, the other side. So when that's tightened up, you then just nip it up with those two screws and then it just holds it in place. It's, it's, really, it's a really solid setup, to be honest. It's just... You need about eight pairs of hands to be able to do it properly. So we get that tightened up and then that's that tap set into place. So with that tap in now, these tails are really long. So with the hot, I'm just gonna sort of put it about here. So move that out of the way. I'm gonna put it about there. It doesn't need to be right tucked up underneath there. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of pipe, put a set on it. And then the same for the cold the other side and we've got to connect back up to the outside tap. So to be honest, there's not gonna be a lot of pipe work there because the flexors are so long. So we'll crack the bender open and we'll put a little set on this 15mm pipe just to bring it forward a little bit in the cupboard so we can get the flexi hose onto the top of it once it's set into that butterfly valve. So we'll get the pipe in there and just put a tiny little set on like that. It's probably a 20mm set, something like that. Now I tend to always do my sets by eye, but you can do it however works best for you. So if I just offer that in that way, like so, It'll just sit in that clip there, and then the top of it 
will just sit with the fitting on the top. Got a couple of male iron to coppers, wherever I've put them. There we go. A couple of male iron to coppers just to go on the top. So we can pop that one on there and just connect the tail up straight on the top because we've got our isolation at the bottom. So with the hot and cold now connected in, down at the bottom, we've got the hot on, clipped into place, got our main line to copper on there, and then a flexi strap on the top. I've put the cold in as well, clipped into position. Now what I'm gonna do, again, I've got the main line to copper on there, onto the flexi. What I'm gonna do is come off there with press, but let me show you before I take it out. I'm gonna struggle to get my jaws in there because I haven't got any angled jaws yet. So what I'm gonna do is take this off, press, Press a little bit of copper into the end of there first, and then we can put it into position. So let me just let me just do that, do that, give it a little mark on there so we know it's not gonna move. Get my press gun and press that one into position. So now what I can do is put that there, put our cold feed onto the top and then press that fitting into position just there like this. Move my camera out of the way. So with that there, I'll mark it, but to be honest, I know it's not gonna move anyway. Press gun in there. Just spin that round. So make sure that's looking where I want it. There we go. That's that one. And then let's do the top one. Perfect. Now we can work from there and pick up the outside tap with our isolation valve and double check valve. So what we've got to do now is just put this check valve on. So we'll put the nut and olive on, grab a little bit of paste, get the paste around the top like this, and then we can get the double check valve back on and tightened up into position. And then just get it tight like so. Then we can make up the isolation valve as well, get that tight. Then when it comes to put it into place, I've pressed most of it together bar for the two, the top elbow and the bottom elbow, so we can press them in position. It is a little bit of a pain to get this in. Ideally, I should really get some angle jaws for this, but at least we can get the gun in and get it all pressed up. Right, that's the top one's done then. Let's move on down to the bottom. We'll get that first bit of the elbow pressed there and then we can get the gun in the back and get the other bit pressed as well. There we go, hot and cold's connected. Isolation valve's at the bottom. We've got an isolation valve on the outside tap and a double check valve. So there we go, that's all that done. Let's turn the water on and make sure this tap is all up and working. So, it's the hot on. That's the cold on. Up to there, let's just check that we've got it coming out of here. There we go. Perfect. Shall I turn, switch it between the two, pop it in there. Hot and cold. And then we will just, before we go, turn. There we go. It's the outside tap back on. So there we go, all done, taps in. Typical jobbing job, bread and butter job. You can be in, out, hour or so, maybe a little bit more if you've got to alter pipe work and that around. There you go. If you can get four or five tap changes in a day, you'll be doing all right. There's some good money to be made. So there you go. Thanks for watching. As always, hit the like button, drop me a comment below, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.